a great pleasure um, for, for me and Daniela to be here uh, today. Um, so I'm um, starting this presentation uh, and um, Daniela will, will do her best to, to join us, but um, she's having some problems because she's, she's with, the, with the students in, um, um, in a mobility um, a visit and uh, so she's not sure that she'll be able to join us. But anyway, uh, she'll be virtually with us the whole time. So um, um, first of all, thank you. Thank you, Nelly. Um, yeah, we've been uh, working together with Nelly for um, a long time, for a long time. So it's always a pleasure to uh, to cover it with Nelly. So a great um, experience. Thank you very much. Um, yes, as, as Nelly said, I'm a researcher at INDIRE, which is the National Institute for Documentation, Innovation and Educational Research in Italy. Um, and um, I've been dealing with um, a lot of research projects um, uh, and uh, mainly on, on on clean language learning, but um, uh, also on uh, innovation at schools, so a wide range of educational um, approaches, educational uh, projects, um, and uh, um, in, um, in particular, uh, CLIL is, yes, as Nelly said, is um, uh, one of my passions and uh, one of my main research areas. Um, so, in uh, with Nelly, we've been um, uh, working in um, on Techno CLIL, um, uh, that is this um, uh, initiative that I've been uh, um, I'll be telling you more. Uh, about later but first of all i would like to ask if some of the um, any of the participants here today um, has been um, uh, techno cleaner in uh, uh, in uh, the, the past we had uh, three editions actually one in 2014 one in 2016 and 2017 so um, Maybe okay. We have Tiziana, so we have a fan from from Italy. Thank you, Tiziana, for joining us in 2016-2017. So, thank you. Okay. Uh, any other? Uh, oh, Tiziana, uh, they were both uh, positive experiences. Uh, Julie is keen to learn more. Okay. Hope that you you will learn something more today. But um, you may follow us and uh, maybe join us um, uh, to the next uh, Techno Clear in 2018. Uh, okay, we have a lot of new friends and new colleagues and um, hope to get in touch maybe in, in uh, for, for future initiatives. So let's start talking about CLIL. CLIL is the acronym for Content and Language Integrated Learning. Um, you find here the definition uh, provided by um, some of the most uh, renowned, famous, uh, most famous experts in, uh, in CLIL, um, is a dual-focused educational approach in which an additional language is used for the learning and teaching of both content and language with the objective of promoting both content and language mastery to predefined levels. So it is an educational approach that um, is aimed at um, promoting at the same time language competencies and and content acquisition. So both the two um, uh, aims um, uh, that are fostered um, in parallel. And you find here uh, some um, uh, the other acronyms, some of the other acronyms used uh, um, in um, in other uh, places, in other in other languages like the French, in Spanish, in uh, uh, German. Uh, in Italy, we uh, adopted Italian policymakers um, and ministry uh, ministry level decided to adopt for, to adopt the um, Anglo-Saxon um, acronym, so uh, CLIL, Content and Language Integrated Learning. In uh, um, in the state in the state. Um, I think that um, uh, in, in Canada, maybe uh, Nelly, you can confirm it. Um, CBI, content-based instruction, is um, quite popular, and um, uh, we can we, we have some. I mean, um, some some aspects are um, in in common. So um, why this um, strong focus on, on, on CLIL and on innovation? Um, as David Marsh, uh, the, the, the inventor um, uh, of the, the acronym says, here you can find um, the different, um, some of the different um, dimensions of, of CLIL that is considered as an umbrella term. Uh, an umbrella term including um, uh, different um, a wide range of approaches, as you can see here, and English as a medium of instruction is one of them. David Marsh talks about um, uh, CLIL as um, uh, um, a driver for innovation, uh, as it is, and also the European Commission um, has been uh, um, 
promoting um, CLIL as an innovative methodology that can um, improve the quality of education and um, education uh, and um, I mean improving the quality of, uh, of our school curricula. As you can see here, um, English is just um, uh, one of uh, an example of English as a medium of instruction of CLIL because the main um, purpose of um, uh, um, from the European Commission um, and David Marsh cooperated at, at the beginning with the European Commission um, uh, to, to foster this program, um, the main um, one of the main aims was to promote um, uh, plurilingualism, uh, multilingualism. So CLIL as a key uh, to uh, plurilingualism and multilingualism. So just um, an innovative methodology. Um, so not only English, but I mean um, innovative methodology to um, uh, bring um, uh, to, to, to uh, promote this this aim that is you know one of the priorities of the European Commission that is um, a mother tongue plus two two foreign languages and um, uh, so that's why English is um, of course also in, in, in Italy we have um, English as um, um, our main um, foreign language for, for CLIL but uh, not necessarily English. So here I'm just um, uh, mentioning some of the um, uh, the main um, conceptual frameworks on CLIL uh, and with, with their uh, godfather, godmother, so the um, uh, best um, uh, known, uh, the famous experts in CLIL. So we have Do Coyle talk, talking about um, the four C's behind um, CLIL pedagogy pedagogy. Um, uh, content, um, which is, um, you know, subject content delivered through a foreign language. Cognition, um, so the um, uh, cognitive activities, the uh, thinking skills that are activated through uh, CLIL. Communication, because um, the focus on the communicative approach um, in CLIL is, is very strong, so um, the language is, is used for communicating. Um, culture, because culture is always in, um, uh, in the background of any um, CLIL activities. And as for um, uh, the uh, other um, conceptual frameworks, we have Cummins talking about BICS and CALP. Uh, BICS is basic interpersonal communicative skills. Um, uh, that means the language for um, uh, communicating in the daily life for, for you know, um, informal inter relationship and uh, uh, communications um, uh, maybe with friends, with, um, uh, with the family, so in, the, in, in social context. And this is the, um, so the genre of what we could say maybe um, the, the general you know general English or general so general communicate communication for um, for informal uh, context why CALP refers to um, academic um, language proficiency cognitive academic language proficiency which is the you know higher level of competence in um, uh, in, in, in as, as far as language is concerned. So when you have to talk about um, academic um, uh, concept, so you have to use the language of schooling, you have to use a higher level of, uh, um, um, of language. And um, uh, so you have to um, get over the, the basic communicative skills uh, with friends, but to use um, a higher standard of the language. And so CLIL is just, um, you know, um, uh, um, um, allows to, to get this, this shift um, from basic communicative inter competencies to uh, cognitive academic proficiencies and so uh, it's it's a higher level of development in, in language competencies. Um, then we have in the um, um, uh, bottom of the, the slide, um, we have Peter Mesto mentioned, um, another uh, very important expert on CLIL. Um, uh, he talks about um, the revolutionary aspects of um, CLIL, which um, reshapes uh, the way of um, um, just um, um, teaching uh, the daily um, uh, teaching practices, but not only um, uh, as far as uh, teachers and students are concerned, but the whole um, uh, community, the whole, uh, all the stakeholders in, uh, uh, in the school community. As you can see here, um, you have 
uh, teacher students, but we have all, all, also parents, trainers, researchers, and teachers, and spec politicians. So um, CLEL is another is a revolutionary um, methodology that uh, impact that has a strong impact on the school community as a whole, and that's why we have to uh, innovate to reshape um, uh, the school in general. That's what Mehisto says. So um, I'm, I'm I'm going to um, go on with the with the slides, but of course I, I um, I'm giving an eye to the uh, to the chat. So um, uh, um, thank you, Nelly. I see that you are moderating and you are answering the question. But if you just want to interrupt me and, um, and ask me any particular questions, um, uh, I can of course uh, answer in the end. But also while I'm speaking, and no problem, I can interrupt anytime. So always mentioning David Marsh, um, uh, CLIL, uh, David Marsh um, designed this CLIL trajectory so that these um, future developments that can be, um, uh, that can be um, conceived for, for the future. And uh, um, this sort of trajectory is a sort of, um, um, it, it is, uh, means meeting the demands of um, uh, our uh, families and um, uh, students. Demand for additional languages, and that's what CLIL does. So um, meets this demand in the sense that provides additional languages in um, uh, school curriculum. And this is um, uh, is becoming um, uh, um, very important demand from um, families. The international, the, the focus on internationalization is um, uh, becoming more and more important uh, all over Europe, but I guess all over the world. Um, it um, uh, the uh, impact on competence building curriculum. So we are uh, working uh, in our schools on competence uh, based learning. So not um, we have a specific reform in Italy um, on this as well. So the focus is not anymore on specific content on syllabi on um, programs, but on building competencies. So fostering uh, our students, um, you know, reflection on. On uh, the, the the competencies that are required to get to certain levels, so not not necessarily um, specific um, uh, pieces of, of knowledge or content, and that's why CLIL um, can help um, achieving the, this goal. And then, um, so there are, uh, CLIL is um, you know. Um, uh, meets the demand to uh, integrate with other trajectories, influencing education, um, platforms to enact quality in educational systems. So that's what that, um, an important aspect that um, David, um, uh, that I, I know personally and I cooperate with him a lot, um, uh, is always, you know, focusing on. So just um, um, the importance of um, quality in education and CLIL can really improve uh, quality in, in education. Um, so always uh, to answer the, to the question why CLIL, uh, here I'm mentioning um, the meta study that you may probably know from John Hattie on visible learning um, uh, that um, refers to um, the teaching strategies that that can have um, a high impact on learning processes on, on the learning and so get to the deep learning so what is called the deep learning um, you can see in in the grant the green bar uh, the um, uh, teaching practices that are mentioned by 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 Hattie um, the meta study is quite it is really wide you it, and, and interesting because for each um, teaching strategy you can find um, the score uh, so how strong is the impact of this um, strategy to uh, the learning process? And in the green bar, you can see mastery learning, teaching, problem solving, spaced practice, reciprocal teaching, feedback, metacognition, not taking and direct instruction. So these are the strategies that can really help our students get to, to the deep learning. And CLIL um, take advantage of this, can take advantage of all of all this, this teaching strategies and, um, and so can can um, uh, achieve uh, deep learning. So why ICT? Um, as you can you can um, uh, see from you could see from the the title of this presentation, we talk about techno which is the combination um, uh, between 
CLIL and technologies and ICT and um, uh, is the focus that this combination of um, CLIL and ICT is the, the, the topic of um, uh, our MOOC, our uh, training initiative that we had with EBO in 2014, 16 and 17 that I, I'm, I'm going to um, explain better later. So um, the, um, the, the idea is um, that the combination, this link between uh, CLIL and ICT is particularly effective, is particularly important and I'm going to motivate why. So our students are called screen agers because they are the digital generation. They are always immersed, constantly exposed to digital uh, inputs to a screen. And they always communicate and through um, through a screen, through uh, the, their iPhone. I can see. I can mention my. I mean directly my um, uh, my experience. I've got a um, 15 year old um, uh, girl, a daughter, and she's constantly with her iPhone in her hand, always day and night. I may say, unfortunately, so. So um, it, it, it is just um, the way they communicate with with their um, uh, you know with their friends with their uh, with the outer world. It's just um, and that's why they are called screenagers. Uh, and David Marsh talks about this. Um, um, two new acronyms, um, digital as a second language and digital as a foreign language, so DSL and DFL. So the D is just the first letter of the acronym um, and uh, um, it means that the digital dimension is, is very, very important, it's crucial, so it's just uh, another language, it's a foreign language, a second language, so this is very, um, uh, you know, important to, to uh, and is underlined by, by David Marsh himself. And so uh, technologies play a key role in developing the 21st century generation skills. So we uh, talk about um, the six C's uh, that are, um, the, the, you know, the, uh, are considered the soft skills or uh, transversal skills or 21st century skills um, uh, and um, are the, the, the skills that are just unmissable. Our students um, need uh, to have these skills to survive, to face um, the 21st century, the, the, the challenges of the knowledge society. Uh, and they are um, uh, creativity, character education, uh, citizenship, um, communication, um, critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration. Uh, yes, microphone is, is just is just wonderful. I like it. It's, um, it's pictures. And I'm just uh, um, mentioning quoting one of, of, of it. Um, so CLIL can, uh, can help develop the, the CCs of education. Um, as you can see, uh, the letter C is quite recurrent in uh, in education. We had um, uh, we had um, uh, just um, uh, the the four C's in in the coil, and, um, and now we have the the, the C six um, uh, of education. Um, the current education um, uh, we mean the uh, the focus, the reflection on the development of. Um, of the character of the of a person, so um, uh, just um, uh, you know to um, reflect on on how uh, to um, control emotions and to develop just um, the you know the the, the different the wide um, and the complex sphere of um, uh, of character. Yes, Nelly, there's a lot of research on it, so it's just um, uh, I mean just giving a very very simple and um, elementary just uh, answer, but yeah, is is a very is a very complex um, area. Um, so, um, new learning context. Our schools are just different, uh, or maybe they are they are, they are changing. Uh, we are, we find uh, learning contexts that are hybrid of overlapping physical and virtual spaces, flowing into and out of each other, tied together by new technologies. So it means that um, it's um, um, an essential dimension. So technology is something that we um, we have to take into uh, consideration into account we, we can't do without and um, uh, in, in our schools we can I don't know if, if you if you can confirm from the countries where you are from but um, we are trying in Italy we are trying to move to this new learning context so of course we have um, very advanced schools where um, um, 
uh, they are you know trying um, uh, informal settings and um, uh, a lot of you know tablets and uh, um, uh, interactive whiteboards but uh, there are some others uh, that are maybe uh, you know building they are working to get to this to this aim of course um, uh, in, in in state schools we have you know um, this, uh, this this movement but but the Ministry of Education is is investing a lot we have um, uh, a national um, digital plan um, that is just um, uh, focus that is aimed at um, uh, spreading technologies and digital devices all over um, the Italian uh, Italian schools. Uh, and so uh, it, it's also the um, European Commission, uh, European Commission itself, that recommends the, the use of learning technologies for uh, language learning and, and for CLEL. So um, we we have this this um, this is a free report from the European Commission that is very interesting, where you can find a lot of research um, on um, on CLEL and the benefits on CLEL and uh, the benefits of uh, learning technologies for uh, learning a language, a foreign language and um, for um for clear so um, also case studies from different countries in Europe are mentioned and uh, uh, it could be really interesting um, to, 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 to read it yes um, Betsy I agree that um, some schools in USA are going totally digital um, I agree on this this um, uh, hybrid overlap yes because um, it also meets the um, uh, students um, learning needs and so um, it's it's, um, social learning is, is very important, as, as, as Nelly said. And uh, anyway, you can you can always um, find a space where paper uh, can be relevant, can be important. So just um, uh, yeah, the, the, the high, that's why um, I mean, me too. I, I like this this hybrid um, a lot. So the, um, the research trends, I'm just mentioning some of the research trends that, um, uh, that focus on, on um, this link between uh, um, learning technologies in, uh, uh, in the field of um, uh, language learning and CLEL. So we have computer assisted language learning. Uh, I'm getting you are quite familiar with, the, with all these acronyms. Um, uh, computer language learning is computer assisted language learning is yes use a computer for um, as assisting in, in language uh, learning process uh, we have tell uh, which is technology enhanced language learning um, so it's a massive and wider use of technologies not not only computer uh, and then we have mall which is the evolution from call to mall so from computer to mobile so mobile assisted language learning all the you know the dimensions of mobile devices for language learning and for CLIL, and then task-based language learning and technology. So the task-based approach um, uh, for um, uh, with the use of technologies, because of course you can uh, you can assign very effective and engaging tasks uh, through the use in uh, of course for language learning through the use of technology. So. As you can see, a lot of scholars, um, there are a lot of studies and research in uh, in this field, and um, so that, that can show how uh, you know important is the um, use of technologies in in um, uh, I mean as supported by by the the research. So it's a must. We have to innovate. Our teachers have to change because you understand learning is dynamic and not to change means to quit growing. So it's um, a must. We have to keep up with these new developments and take into account um, these changes and of course reshape uh, the way we, uh, we teach. Uh, and to the extent teacher training is particularly important uh, because um, it's it's uh, fundamental to uh, train teachers to you know meet these um, uh, challenges and um, uh, follow the um, uh, you know the um, uh, students uh, development. Um, clearly, it's used in in phase in, in the meantime. I'm just having a look at the. Yes, the, uh, the chat and um, uh, clear students in face to face classroom, but not only Nelly. So um, it depends. I mean, clear is, um, uh, of course, is used in, um, uh, in in class, I mean, by the teachers in um, uh, with their students. But there are a lot of uh, um, uh, experiments, for example, um, linked to the 
classroom, which is um, um, yeah, yeah, to K to twelve. Yeah, I can say that. For example, in um, uh, in um, upper secondary schools, um, uh, so it's uh, you know um, high schools um, uh, where initially, for example, clearly is mandatory um, is, is obligatory. Um, uh, clearly is of course face to face, but we have a lot of teachers working um, with flipped classroom. So it means that I flipped classroom and clear. So it means that I invert. So they use a lot of videos, a lot of um, online materials. They have their own platform, maybe the Moodle platform for the school, where they upload videos and digital content. And um, according to the flipped classroom methodology, they assign, for example, videos or other digital content before uh, the lesson. And um, yeah, sure, they, they meet the students face to face in, uh, in, in, in school. But, uh, but we have some interesting experiments of blended, we could say, you know, blended learning some, with some um, um, add-ons with, uh, yeah, blended learning uh, with videos or, that, or, that, or other um, uh, digital contents maybe delivered through uh, um, e-learning platforms. So in Italy, we have a specific teacher training plan, a national teacher training plan um, that is um, that has um, introduced uh, teacher training as mandatory. Uh, and um, uh, clearly language learning are top priorities for the next year. So that's why um, clearly is one of the priorities also um, uh, for the Italian Ministry of Education. And now we have techno clear. I don't, I don't think that Daniela, maybe um, Nelly, you can check, but um, I think that Daniela unfortunately couldn't, was not able to join us. So uh, I can go on on the problem. Um, so, um, technical is the um, uh, initiative we we had with um, uh, we moderated and then I with the help of um, um, uh, with the help of um, uh, Nelly, be um, in uh, within the uh, framework of EVO Electronic Village Online, which is um, a community of practice of TESOL International. Um, that every year uh, between January and February organizes um, uh, uh, events, uh, online training events, uh, tra training um, um, initiatives, uh, uh, five week, it is a five week um, uh, training initiatives on different topics um, and uh, maybe Nelly um, may want to say something more about EVO and about um, next sessions in, uh, in 2018. Um, but we, we had, Daniel and I had um, in uh, 2013, I guess it was, um, an EVO session on uh, personal learning network and personal learning environment. And then we specialized in uh, CLIL, CLIL with technologies because we, um, uh, we had very positive feedback from the participants. We had um, in 2014, um, uh, just uh, 200 participants from all over the world that it was um, just a, a big um, figure for us at the time but then uh, in 2016 and 17 we had uh, 5,000 participants so it was just a, a boom it was just um, um, a, a great boom um, yes, in fact, Nelly wears different hats and um, uh, she's the co-lead coordinator of EVO 18. So uh, maybe Nelly, uh, afterwards, you may say something, you may want to say something more about EVO 18, where I guess, where I hope um, for uh, Technoclil um, 2018, we, we may be able to meet our uh, participants today. So the, this is the, um, um, the uh, this is a poster that we present um, Daniel and I presented um, in a um, conference, and um, well, you can see um, the different, um, um, the main um, aspects. First of all, the map, um, the, the 5,000 participants were um, uh, participants from all over the world, but a great concentration um, uh, participants were from Italy, where you can see them. Uh, a lot of spots on Italy because, um, uh, because as I said, um, it clearly is a priority in, in Italy, and um, uh, it is um, you know that there's a strong um, focus on on this topic, and also because uh, teacher training is a particular you know uh, delicate issue in Italy because um, in Italy teachers um, have to um, uh, subject teacher, uh, so teacher of history or um, geography or maths or whatever, have to get the specific um, uh, competence um, 
uh, in, uh, um, in, in the language, which is the C1 level, uh, according to the Common European Framework um, of Reference for Languages. Um, but they also have to attend a specific course on methodology in CLEL, uh, delivered by Universal. So, um, uh, there's a strong need um, of um, uh, teacher training in Italy um, uh, because, uh, because they have to, you know, to um, to get this this um, uh, skills both in language and in the methodology. So they they are eager to, you know, to uh, attend to to get materials and uh, attend courses, especially when they are um, um, sort of you know hand-on uh, courses. In fact, that's what we wanted to do with Daniela in, in, in Techno Really, we wanted to um, to work, uh, you know to give also uh, to provide ideas and um, um, uh, to provide uh, uh, practical you know suggestions and uh, useful uh, uh, use, um, um, toolkits to um, just um, um, experiment in the, in the classes and so this was the you know one of the the key aspect another aspect was the the social dimension because you wanted them to um, yeah to share that's what it's is, is, is writing um, appreciated a great variety of works which they shared in the wiki so we wanted um, we invested a lot in the peer learning experience so we wanted um, them um, to share their experiences in the wiki but then um, um, uh, in the wiki was um, in, in 2016 one of the major uh, tool of the sharing but then we had in 2017 a wide range of, of tools we wanted I mean to, to uh, you can see for example here we have Moodle Facebook and uh, YouTube and in in and telegram and uh, uh, channel and Twitter um, in in the Moodle, for example in, in the model that um, Nelly kindly um, um, provided us um, we wanted for example to um, um, we wanted them uh, to share their their experiences their their plan their lesson plans for example using um, a specific tool for planning which is called learning designer um, but we also provided them with them um, a grid for peer assessment so um, we wanted them to reflect um, also and, and comment on their peers experiences and work um, uh, giving them um, certain guidelines, a certain so uh, greed fill in, and uh, um, in order to improve also you know their their own um, teaching practices, um, and um, uh, then we we had to um, we wanted them to reflect on different on different. Um, to use different tools uh, to discover themselves new tools because uh, the web 2.0 is you know um, an apps and is, is, is a really um, endless treasure of um, powerful resources um, uh, so they um, they just uh, wanted to um, uh, you know we asked them to um, find out new um, uh, uh, resources new um, uh, uh, new um, web tools to use in their classes. Um, then we uh, delivered a badge at the end of the uh, of each week and at uh, the end of the course, and we had a lot of webinars. And webinars was the um, uh, maybe the uh, added value for this um, initiative in particular, uh, and also because uh, Nelly helped us a lot and provided us with um, uh, with IQ. So we are going Nelly to experiment this wonderful with IQ with uh, with our new um, participants in Technical in 2018, and it's going to be. Uh, wonderful. Um, so in um, um, WizIQ we, we had um, a lot of um, uh, webinars with, with experts um, uh, from, from, from all over the world, international experts uh, on CLEL and learning technologies that were, uh, but also, you know, very, very famous. We had David Marsh, we had experts from the European Commission, we had um, uh, university um, um, experts from um, uh, you know high level and uh, that is because they they just and of course they did uh, all for free uh, because the um, um, you know, if you technical ill, if you all all if your sessions are free, and so um, they uh, decided to um, 
uh, they accepted to volunteer for speaking, uh, for presenting at TechnoClear, because the uh, whole um, community, the whole clear community, international clear community, um, was, you know, interested and um, uh, and was um, happy to, uh, you know, to, 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 to help and to cover it and to spread the word about CLIL in, uh, uh, in this way. Um, I'm giving some example um, of the activities. This is the you see the map and um, the the Padlet where um, uh, the participants. Um, introduce themselves with their pictures and their um, description this is a uh, and the pilot was also the um, uh, the tool that they had that they used uh, um, for their learning diary so the learning diary is a very important um, element in um, uh, in our um, uh, you know our training activities because um, uh, the learning diary is uh, and it was also introduced by the in Italy uh, as compulsory by the teacher training plan um, yes um, it's it's um, a way to reflect um, uh, to act 